there's um a specific topic that we had mentioned a few episodes ago um very briefly and we figured we're gonna save it because i'm sure we had we would dedicate you know a majority of uh, of time if not the entire episode talking about this one concept right and it's something that brother ooch brought up that he he he's confused on how sayings that are not fully bred sayings like they're not 100 percent how are like wouldn't wouldn't they theoretically be weaker than you know a saying that is full blood and so we can get into that so i guess brandon i guess i i will lead this to you really why you think that should be the case because obviously it's not but you know yeah um i just don't understand because like for example i guess i guess i'll use um i'll use goku and gohan really as like the prime example like my goku is full-blooded full-blooded saiyan right so theoretically he should be way stronger than gohan could ever potentially be like even even when like they train together for example or whatever like like sure like you go back to look you look at z and shit and until gohan until they went into the hyperbolic time chamber and shit and gohan really was training like with his dad and shit and everything like that's when gohan technically surpassed go or goku when he achieved super saiyan 2 because we all suspect and kind of i guess can come to an agreement that he unlocked that form in the hyperbolic time chamber or goku at least saw the potential of that and uh to bring it out of him um and he was hyping him up <laughs> so through that whole series so like it's just mac confusing to to a degree because it's like why why like how could we really think that like gohan sh or like yeah how do we really think gohan could be stronger than goku at like in general like especially with the amount of training and an effort that goku puts in on his own like you can't just you can't just put gohan into the conclusion now like and just say like if he committed himself at this point in time that over time gohan will be stronger than goku i don't believe that shit because goku's never gonna drop training nah. like i feel like at this point especially like it's impossible for gohan to to outdo goku Hmm. I'm okay. gonna say that. I'm gonna say that clearly. I'm gonna say that clear because I don't care how many boosts this fucking guy gets. Gohan. I'm talking about Gohan here. Right. Because because this man could just be sitting on his ass, and then all of a sudden Toriyama wants to give this man another power up <laughs> out of out of the blue, due to good reason, I guess. Because I don't I don't mind man's getting a power up, but then then all those Gohan heads out there want to say, you know, he's now stronger or on par with goku like i'm not cool with that so especially especially due to the fact that gohan's only like half saiyan so it's like like yeah he has goku's blood and everything like that so of course he's gonna be strong as fuck but i feel like half blood should have a limit as like so yeah i think i, I think i'll leave it at that for now but we'll probably get more into depth with it kai your face looks like you have something answer. to add to that did you did you have anything to add to that no, I mean, it makes sense. Saying blood diluted should be weaker. <laughs> they, that's <laughs> not how they. That's exactly <laughs> what it, bro. That's exactly what it is. We're talking about like, like we're not talking about a Saiyan mixed with like a fucking Frieza race. Frieza race. We're talking about humans. We are talking about Earthlings. We are talking about bottom of the barrel, below zero power level dirt. Okay, like this is sad. This is Saiyan blood diluted. This is <laughs> it's like instead of instead of getting like a real fucking drink, you know, like when you just have water and then you just mix the mix a little powder in it, like there you go. Here, here's a juice. <laughs> like <laughs> get the fuck out of here. You know that's just not the same. Yeah. But that's not how they wrote it. And the the their reasoning behind it was because, oh, you know, the emotional side, you know, when Saiyans get really in like in tap with themselves and mm. their emotions things like that you know we see we see that power just kind of unleash itself right. but 
people people always want to throw reference to you know gohan as a kid and the whole raditz thing and when he went rage mode back then and all the times he screamed and things like that like oh he has this ozaru thing stop <laughs> stop gohan is not special every single saiyan has access to ozaru stop mm. that's not what's happening here i like okay he was a kid he displayed something incredible i am not denying him that all i'm trying to say is that y'all need to stop treating him like he's special because at the end of the day every single saiyan has access to that yeah it makes me it make it to, not to derail or like to go off course too much but it really almost it really makes me curious as to how it would have been for goten and trunks if you know if toriyama fucking remembered to give them their tails right but we'll never see that i don't think and i and unless you know they implement that now which i mean th that would be a very dragon ball thing to do if you think about it where if they were to decide like yeah let's just bring it back with no explanation right that is a very dragon ball thing to do so if that, so if that ever happened you heard it here first right of you course. know i actually well, do you ha how much more do you have to say? Because I actually have something interesting now. Oh, go ahead. I, think. I mean, I know what I'm going to say in response to everything. So, go ahead. Yeah. So, so if we want to do, like, a bunch of comparisons, right, between, like, I guess, full blood and half blood. I, and I just thought of this because you said Goten and I'll even say Kid Trunks in this in this case. Yeah. Goten and even Kid Trunks are technically both half-blooded sands. Mm -hmm. Like, full half-blood, not just like a quarter or nothing right because they're goku's fucking kids or, or a kid yeah the, the goten. yeah they're in the same so, like generation t kind so, of yeah yeah so if go like if we want to compare like gohan to goten then we can arguably say that if goten actually like committed himself to training and shit while gohan fucking slacks off goten can be way stronger than gohan or like you know he he can be in that realm mm. so to so to speak but i would never compare goten to goku for example and say he's going to be stronger than goku because goku that's, is always in the gym that's what makes it so bold too because people will compare gohan to goku all day but not goten to goku but goten yeah. to gohan is not a bold yeah it's comparable as fuck because goten is the youngest super saiyan ever right right now right yes yeah, yeah that's correct mm -hmm. yeah so like for example if gohan and goten were to really be in the gym like that over time i could i would i would boldly state that goten could potentially catch up to gohan and, and as soon as gohan starts slacking off again goten will surpass gohan just due to the fact that they're both equally blooded right and I'm and a, just yeah, that's how that's how I'm gonna word it. So just a so quick side know. note, like super off top. Well, I guess not super off topic, but um, quick side note. We're not gonna we're not gonna talk about how Goten learned Super Saiyan. We're not gonna talk about who taught him Super Saiyan. Yeah. <laughs> this is why this is why we made this an episode because there's so many great points to look at this whole topic from. Because for those that don't remember, it was Chi Chi. Okay. Right. The same woman who put Gohan in the books. So right, I'm, right. Because she she got her young scholar, and she's kind of like, you know what? I could use a little bodyguard at home. Fuck Second it, kid here. syndrome is a real fucking <laughs> thing. It's a real thing, okay? And here's an example, Brand. You got cookies downstairs, right? How many cookies you got downstairs? Got like three packs. Ask me how many fruit snack packs I got. I don't see none in that closet. <laughs> <laughs> Second kid fucking syndrome exists guys oh no it exists in real life it exists in fucking anime too okay and there you have it where you think the anime learned it from exactly real life real life right as, as fiction as this shit might be sometimes that's bold it's crazy right but that's that's that that right there is crazy right so to go back on onto the tracks um so the first thing i wanted to say <laughs> for the, first, the first thing i wanted to say was that um the idea of, like, because you guys make great points, right? Like, diluted blood from Saiyans, oh, yeah. it should, it, it, when you put it that way, yes, they shouldn't be as strong as a Saiyan with full blood. But I think this is just another example of 
how when like when you have generational anything right like in life in in anime not even just with dragon ball like i've seen this in everything where it's like any and it's not it's not that they have to be like some crazy prodigy but usually what ends up happening is as the generations move on they're always meant or set up to be better or stronger than the previous and i've said i've said this so many different times in a lot of different ways and you know this is like you know this is obviously no stranger to you know borrow or using that concept because if 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 when you and and i'm gonna break it down even further because we're using gohan to goku right let me use goku to bardock right because Mm. when you think of it this way right bardock clearly was a strong guy for being a low-class warrior right but clearly i mean you know something funny happened and he was able to hold his own against gas neither here nor there right however way it was done but it happened right and so he held his own he had his ozaru he you know he was clearly a reliable you know saiyan right but then his son Okay, and and this, and this is the interesting part. Okay, Goku was born second. All right, so I don't really know if order of children matter, but Raditz, I mean, he wasn't. I don't. Who's to say Raditz could have been up there if he was given the proper like you know like if he if like imagine if Raditz remained as a character, he I'm sure would be another super ah, saiyan. But, but that's the thing though. Right, Raditz is the first child. Goku's the second. Yeah, so Goku got free on the Saiyan pod. They he got second kid syndrome. They were like, "Save my child." <laughs> well, <laughs> exactly, exactly. He got to. He was the real thriving one, right? <laughs> he was the thriving he one. He was the real. Yeah, Raditz got to live, but he didn't get to live. You know, he didn't. He didn't, he didn't. He didn't see all this other shit out. You know, Uncle Raditz. Kind of, he's in the dirt right now. But and when you think about it too, they. His the, his sons did get to live, and then they died at the same time. Yeah, they yep they that that's some crazy shit when you think of it like that. But right. you know, obviously Goku being the one to, of course, live on t- throughout the story, even in depth, and then brought back and all that kind of stuff, which is interesting. But when you look at it going for like further back, like even before Z, Goku in his own right was a very talented young individual. Right when and you and, and this is the thing, right? I, I notice it's kind of like a trend with with the Dragon Ball fandom. A lot of folks they haven't experienced the original Dragon Ball, okay? And this is Dragon Ball No Z, okay? Because and I can tell because you don't really see too many people referencing the original ever, unless you're geeked them. Or you're like anyone that you know is a is a real fan of and has seen all of that shit. No one ever makes references. Everything is always going back to Z. Sometimes people want to look at GT and not pretend like they don't want to, but they end up doing it anyway. Um, and then obviously all the shit with Super. But the but the reality is, and this is very important, is that and I and honestly I feel like for all of us in on this right now. If we were to all watch Dragon Ball right now, I feel like we'd we'd enjoy it more so because watching Dragon Ball as a kid, I'm sure you'd enjoy it just fine, right? But here's the thing. Dragon Ball does something that I don't think Z does that that well or even Super. And the fact that this is one of the best versions of Goku because he is first of all, he's young, he's a kid. He's well, he's 14 actually, right? He's 14 years old. But he has no in real life human interaction experience. So when he learns shit, it's the funniest fucking thing in the world. Like him trying, like him learning what a female is, is the funniest, in 2022, the funniest fucking thing I've ever seen. And it's so, and it's so funny. And, and, and it's interesting to watch it now, especially because back then, Toriyama didn't see this all happening the way that it did. But obviously, you know they wrote all of the things to kind of complement what was already existing but my point is that goku has always been talented and obviously he was a full-blooded saiyan to another full-blooded saiyan but bardock you know for what we got to see him do 
it just seemed like Goku was just like obviously way more talented than his dad. And that's, you know, that's just a generation to generation. So like, and, and, and the one thing, and I, I, I'm i pretty sure I mentioned this, you know, Goku has always been, he's been the same. He's always wanted to train and get stronger and learn, right? As soon as he found out about Master Roshi, he wanted to learn from him. And the, soon, the, the, the second he saw Roshi do the Kamehameha, Goku did it right on the spot. Because he was like, I want to learn how to do that. And Roshi was like, oh, it's going to take you like five years to master. Even though Goku's was not a good one, he fucking did a little one right on the spot at that young age. So think about this. Back then, I mean, right? I know nowadays, seeing the Kamehameha is like, who fucking cares? Vegeta's doing it in Legend. <laughs> right? He Like, we got everybody doing fucking Kamehameha waves. Back then, that was like how when we saw Goten and Trunks go Super Saiyan as kids, like you mentioned. Back then, it was a big deal. So now it's like, okay, now progress the times. Now it's like, okay, Gohan, when he was a kid and Goku was, you know, older, adult, right? Daddy Goku, whatever. Gohan showed his little genius or however you want to word it as soon as he saw his dad getting fucked up and he broke out the sand pod. You know, like... I don't think like 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 the thing the thing here really to take away from all this like my my point is that even diluted as long as you are a saiyan you got to drop in there you have a you have a good chance of being like you know just that because like I don't I I think that would just that alone that concept kind of just applies to any kind of alien race or just a race in general because, like, I feel like, for example, if I was to bring in the Kryptonians, right, Superman, I feel like that dude and his future kids, grandkids, they're all going to have Kryptonian in them. So they can all be on the same shit. And it's up to them to, you know, if they got the talent, cool. If they don't, they ha- they're, they're always going to be Kryptonian. Like, we ha- like it's not, and, it's, and the same thing here. It's not like every Saiyan, half breed or quarter breed or whatever. It's not like they're all geniuses and super talented. Vegeta has a daughter that everyone forgets about. She not doing nothing. Bola, right? She not doing shit or bra. What? It depends on the version, I guess, that you're watching, because it's, it's the same character. Um, and that's how it goes, right? And, and that's just how it goes. And that, and I just I think that uh yeah I, I, that's 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 basically what I'm what I think right there is just like. It's not really about the, that the half breeds should be weaker. It's just more or less like, well, how was your how was your family tree? You know? I have a I have something I have something here because I as you were saying about the, like the half breeds and shit, I was thinking in my head. So go let, let's let's kind of trying to simplify this shit. So it's like okay, so we know Gohan is half sand, half human. human yeah, right, Earthling. The human half is complete shit. So unless, you, unless, 100%. unless you're saying, unless you're saying he was half sand, half mutant, then we're talking okay. because now that's that blood is worth something. Exactly. <laughs> and and now and now we can say that Gohan has the potential to be stronger than Goku essentially exactly. because he's full sand. Because the comparison between uh bardock and goku that's comparable just because they're both full-blooded sands and the generation um conspiracy or whatever makes sense (laughs) it makes sense because like because the jet like generational the generational shit makes sense in like overall because like obviously when you have sons or in general like you want them to be stronger than you but they have to have your whole essence, like your whole bloodline. Like that's the thing. So it's like Bardock and Goku. Like that comparison makes full sense, and it makes sense that Goku was able to become stronger over time, even though Bardock had didn't didn't live long enough, obviously, to to maybe reach a potential that Goku maybe wouldn't reach or something like yeah. that. You know. But it makes sense that Goku was able to uh, maintain strength and and like grow as an individual and be be stronger right. over time oh that's that good shit <laughs> <laughs>